Hey everybody, it's Jay, and this is going to be a first look, first impressions of the Vortex Razor AMG UH-1. This is a hollow sight that's kind of meant to compete with the EOTech, and it's priced equivalently to the EOTech 512. I'm not really going to get super in-depth on the features, I'll save that for a future video, or you can go out and look at the spec sheets on Vortex's website. And again, this isn't going to be a full review because I've only got a few dozen rounds down the pipe with this on my gun just to make sure that it worked didn't flicker or have any out-of-the-box malfunctions that were easy to diagnose early on before I made a longer time commitment out at the far range. Some of the features that I like about this is for $350, which is equivalent to the EOTech 512, you get an integrated QD mount out of the box. So, and I actually really like the lockup on this. It has this push button lever to lock the lever down, keep the lever locked down from moving on you. Adjustment wasn't bad at all. It snapped on pretty fast. Additionally, it has the CR123A drum style battery. And if you want, you can swap that out for a rechargeable battery. The rechargeable battery has about 600 hours of battery life, I'm assuming at medium low settings. And the non rechargeable is about 1500. So it's a little bit of a trade off if you want to be able to recharge it or just use a disposable and get a longer battery life. It does have things like auto shutoff, 15 brightness settings as opposed to the 512's 20, and here's the USB port for charging. Unfortunately, you can't load any hot ROMs on there, so you're not going to be playing the Japanese version of Metroid on it. I'll go ahead and cut over to some shooting footage real quick and get back to my sort of initial impressions, I suppose, my opinion of it, and uh, in the limited amount of time that I've had it. So, just going to run a few test shots through this and make sure everything is good on it, and then take it out to the longer range at some point in the future for a better uh, longer range review test thing. Anyway, So it worked fine, no flicker, no instantly diagnosable problems out of the box. Um, I do really like the clarity of this. My voice is going to get a little bit louder as they get close to the camera. Razor, I should say Vortex Optics, have always been very clear. Every one that I've gotten has been very clear. Now, I kind of cheated last time I did an optics video. I ended up... Um, using pictures of the reticle instead of actually getting it on camera. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how difficult it is to get a reflected reticle on to show up on camera in any kind of clarity. It has been an ongoing nightmare for me tonight to try to get this on camera. This is probably take 20. Um, you can kind of see it there, not very clearly. And unfortunately, no matter what lighting condition I used, this autofocus is always going to try to focus on something that is not the reticle. So, this might be a fool's errand. You can kind of see it there. Um, it's a little bit different than the EOTech. It has the center dot, it has the larger MOA ring on the outside, but then it also has a little arrow on the bo bottom that acts as a sort of bullet drop compensation. This is gonna frustrate everybody, I know it is. There we go, I got it, I found the combination. And then it just went out of focus. Well, you can rewind it and pause it, I guess. <laughs> That's as best as I'm gonna do on it for now. So, but that just gives you an idea. But yeah, my first impressions of this are, I'm, are very positive. It was very fast on target. Like I said, the optics are very clear. The dot, the reticle, I guess I should say, is very clear as well. It does have pixelation like a lot of hollow sites do. For a reflex sight, it's totally fine for me. I have an astigmatism and it works perfectly fine for me when I've got my glasses on, so no problems there. So I'm standing in a nearly pitch black room to show off another feature that I think is pretty cool. These are equipped with what Vortex calls FHQ technology. No idea what FHQ stands for, but basically what that is meant to do is mitigate light transmission 
from the front of the optic. So obviously you're seeing the rear of the optic here, looking down the sight, the objective lens. I'm going to flip it around. And now you're looking at the front of the optic. Um, I've kind of gotten all kind of different angles looking through this thing from the front and can't see any perceptible light transmission. So that is pretty cool. You can't actually see the, uh, the light transmitting on those. And I'll find it there again. And then flip it back around. And no light. Pretty neat. Now the magnifier is really going to shine at longer ranges. And my Brin 2 has been pretty accurate, so I wanted to have something that had a little bit longer range capability without actually dedicating uh, the rail space to a full length scope. The uh, UH-1 is pretty heavy. It's about an ounce heavier than the 512, but it's also two inches shorter, which is kind of nice. Um, it does look quite bulky, but as a lot of people have been very quick to remind me in the High Point video, um, looks don't mean anything. Obviously, they mean something to someone because people always complain about how things look on things and about things. So um, but for me, it, the kind of squared nature of it looks fine on this gun. That's all subjective. Who gives a crap? Now, my experience with magnifier, red dot, magnifier, non-magnified reflex options has been pretty limited. Uh, the only one I've ever used was a very early, maybe a Gen 1 primary arms magnifier, and it was extremely dark. The optical quality was very poor on that. Um, this one, on the other hand, is quite good, a lot better at the very least. It, showing you on camera is not going to do any good because it's a 3x magnifier, so you're not really going to see anything but just a blurred mess in it. Um, the eye relief is, I wouldn't go so far as to say generous, some might, uh, 2.6 inches. Um, definitely more generous than an ACOG, um, but it is a very particular eye relief. So if you're not right kind of in the sweet spot, um, you're going to get the, you know, the tubing effect, uh, the pinhole black rings around the thing. There's got to be a name for that for scopes. But you know what I mean. You're not going to, you're going to basically have a lim more limited field of view if you're looking down it and you're not right in the right spot. So if you're a little too far forward, unlike with an ACOG, um, whenever you get really close to it, the field of view opens up. This, if you get start getting closer, it starts to narrow again. So um, a particular eye relief, but not at all a bad one at 2.6 inches. Now, like I said, the clarity has seemed fine, but most of it's just been, you know, testing out, pointing out in the yard and seeing what it looks like. It is adjustable for, you know, getting your optic centered, your reticle centered in the, uh, in the magnifier. And the other nice thing is it has an adjustable focal point. So uh, there is no push button release on it. My, uh, my, my primary arms one had a little lever you push down and it was something to the side. This one was tension. You just push it over and it locks in, push it over, and it also locks in, but that way. So gives you an idea. Still has the kind of cool thing that I like about Vortex where it has this little slot on these very, very thin uh, adjustment covers. So you can unscrew it, flip it over, and then push it bound down in your uh, adjustment turret and then use that as a as your coin or your you know, bullet rim or whatever you have, or screwdriver, or whatever you have laying around at the range. You don't have to do that because it's right there. It's, it's already part of that. So early impressions are very positive. Again, this isn't a full review. I'll come back with a full review later. But um, be sure to like, share, and subscribe and all that stuff. And I will see you again next time with more hopefully interesting videos. See ya.